The war in Afghanistan continues to rage 10 years on. On Saturday, 30 American soldiers and eight Afghans were killed when Taliban insurgents shot down their helicopter. It was the single deadliest incident for U.S. forces in Afghanistan. The attack underlined the continued strength of the insurgency as the United States begins its drawdown. President Obama announced earlier this year that 33,000 troops will leave the country by next summer. That would leave about 70,000 troops until 2014, the scheduled date for the withdrawal of all foreign forces. Joining me now are Dexter Filkins of The New Yorker magazine and Ahmed Rashid, a Pakistani journalist and author. I am pleased to have both of them back on this program and especially together. Welcome. Thank Good you. to see you again. Back, back. When do you go back to the front lines? Well, I just, I just spent... Uh, several weeks in Pakistan and yeah. before that in Afghanistan, so... We'll be here for... I, I hope not for a while. All yeah. right. Uh, let's talk first about Afghanistan. Where are we? Well, I think the situation is deteriorating, you know, very fast. There's certainly a major offensive on by the Taliban. They've launched this assassination campaign. The kind of statements coming out of the U.S. military uh, doesn't seem to r really reflect the reality on the ground. This helicopter um, uh, downing is part of that Taliban escalation. At the same time, there are talks going on with the Taliban. The Americans are talking to the Taliban. And uh, the talks are bogged down because um, uh, it, it seems, you know, they're asking for confidence building measures mm. in which the US military is being asked to basically reduce um, some of these night raids and some of these operations in return for an end to uh, the Taliban assassinating people um, and it's bogged down at the moment because I don't think the US military wants to give any ground because they believe it's been successful in killing Taliban leaders. Yeah, and uh, they want to continue this policy maybe for another another year or so. Um, I don't see it really achieving anything because I think we are we are going to see uh, the Taliban, um, you know continuing to assassinate top figures. What happens if in six months' time um, almost all the top government figures have been knocked out or they've left the country because of fears of attacks? When they say they're talking to the Taliban, what do they mean? Well, there is, there's been a dialogue going on. Uh, there have been a few meetings, um, and, and there have been some positive results on the ground. If you remember, uh, the, the United Nations has now divided al-Qaeda. There's a list of terrorists which they have, which is, uh, uh, everyone was on that list. There are now two lists. There's an al-Qaeda list and a Taliban list, and the hope is that a lot of these Taliban will come off the list. Um, the Americans and the Afghan government have released uh, a number of uh, Taliban prisoners. Uh, all these these were part of confidence building measures that did not involve the military. Uh, but now I think, you know, these, these talks have reached a stage where uh, the U.S. military has to respond in some way. And now, does this involve the highest leadership of the Taliban? Um, it's yeah. involved representatives uh, of... Not only are they participating in a sense, but, yeah. but the people who are talking are talking with the consent and authority of Mullah Omar. Well, we don't know that. We don't know that. Um, I presume, you know, the Americans would know that. And I can presume only that the Americans wouldn't be talking to these people unless they, had be, they were pretty certain. Um, that, you know, these Taliban figures were representing the top leadership. The American military suggested that they were having such success that they were trying to create a circumstance in which the Taliban would want to talk more. Is that the reality? Well, no, I think it's exactly the opposite, actually. I mean, I think the more military action you have, the, um, the, the, the more the less successful it is and therefore the less willing the Taliban are to talk because they think they're winning on the battlefield. Exactly. Yeah. You share that? Yeah, I think it's pretty troubling right now. I mean, if you look at look at 2010, I mean, I mean, we're at the end of the surge now. The 30,000 additional troops are now going home. Right. Last year, the Americans took by their by their own measure, they took off the battlefield about 10,000 Taliban. They killed about 5,000 and they captured about 5,000. And the violence is higher now than it was uh, now than it was a year ago. So it's it's not working. And so at the same time. I think I think the danger of these of these talks, or the potential danger is that if you're the Taliban, um, you know you're just looking at your watch. Um, you know they're just going to run the clock out. I mean I th I think the Americans aren't in a position where they can really. Um, it's, it's just the opposite from what you were saying. Um, they, they're, things are not going well for them. And so why, why, what incentive does the Taliban have to make a deal? And I think that's why they want to continue to fight. But um, it's not going very well. Okay, right but now. American militaries, and we're talking about 
betray us. Right. Suggested things were going well and they were achieving some of their objectives. They've cleared some areas, they've cleared a lot of areas, in this, particularly in the South, that, that they hadn't gone into before, uh, that were controlled by the Taliban. So in that sense, they have. But the, the Taliban has been able to increase the level of violence. And I think over the long term, what is so troubling to me every time that I go there, I mean, the, to me, the big question is, um, okay, so the Americans can fight their way into this village and they can hold the village. Um, what happens when they leave? You know, and and that's the part that's the part that has never worked. That's always been the problem. It's always been the problem that that we ha that that we haven't built anything that can last after we leave. And there isn't, frankly, there just isn't any evidence that there's anything there now. Uh, Dex is absolutely right. And, and what the Americans have built, in other words, an Afghan administration, mm. is being totally wiped out by the Taliban in, in the South. I mean, they've just, they've, in the last two months, they've killed three top officials, including Karzai's brother. Right. Now, these were the power figures in the South who controlled the Afghan administration, in the police, Kandahar. in Kandahar. Now, if you knock out three people like that, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Karzai is running around trying to find replacements. Nobody wants to go to Kandahar because, you know, I mean, nobody wants to take that risk because they know that there'll be a bomb in the... I mean, they kill these people by putting bombs in the turbans. Oh, yes. And, and, and I mean, yeah. you know, this is a new innovation. Right. And uh, so the real factor, the, the real point is, does, is the U.S. going to have a partner to which it can transition to? In other words, when it leaves, will there be a partner who is sufficiently strong enough to hold the country together? And it looks increasingly less likely. Yeah. I mean, this so is, this some, is... some people say the thing that they have not achieved at all is the governance part of it. That's the part. That's the piece. And the, pro the problem is, and if, even if you take, say, Karzai's half-brother, Ahmed Wali, who was, who's one of these people who was assassinated, these are deeply, was... deeply un unpopular people. Um, they, you know, they, they rule uh, in the way that warlords or mafia bosses do. Um, and they are not popular people, but this is what we've built. But were, you know? if, even though they were not popular, were they effective? <sighs> you know, they were effective at... at carrying on day to day yeah. and, uh, and they were effective at helping the Americans find people that they wanted to kill and capture and and they were not effective or they were unpopular because of corruption mostly corruption and failed dysfunctional governance uh, mm. not, nothing nothing mm. works so um, and and all you have to do really I mean if you go to Kandahar is just walk out on the street and start talking to people and everybody will tell you a story you know they say the government came and they plowed down my store and they took the land and you know and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna go join so, the Taliban. So when you come back to the United States as you are both doing uh, now and you begin and you go to Washington and you ask people who's in charge of Afghan Pakistan policy what do they tell you? Well they don't tell us anything but I mean the, the impression certainly in Pakistan and in Afghanistan is that the policy is not being run out of the White House it's being run out of the CIA and the Pentagon. Yeah. And, you know, then you well, ask... Look who's, oh, look who's in charge. And, the, the former CIA directors at the Pentagon yeah. and the former Afghan exactly. military leaders at the CIA. Exactly. And this is the worrying part of, of, of you know, yep. where is the U.S. political strategy in yeah. Afghanistan? Um, yeah. You know, which, which it seems to be missing. The military is dictating, the CIA is dictating the show. This was Holbrook's nightmare. Yeah. That's exactly right. The, I mean, this, this is what is, he struggled against. Yeah. All, all, it's all stick and not much carrot yeah and 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 no governance i mean that's the thing what are we building you know we're killing a lot of people it's not building anything. so so when history is written it's already clear that afghanistan will be a failed american effort as it was a failed russian effort as it was a failed british effort <laughs> i don't like to predict the future but um but i mean i think you can see uh, the cards the cards right now are pretty bad so what could turn it around then? Well, I mean, I think if, if we'd been having this conversation about, I mean, this is apples and oranges, but uh, having this conversation about Iraq in 2007 at the height of the surge, uh, yeah. um, it was a nightmare. There looked absolutely like there yeah, was no way out. Two people believed George Bush, and, and he wasn't sure, and yeah. David Petraeus. And it flipped. Um, it's not a pretty picture. It's not a, you know, Iraq is not Switzerland, but, um, but it turned. Um, I, I can't I mean, see anything. As you know, yeah, it's not the same. It's exactly. not. They're not. You don't have an awakening, or you don't have any of that. No, it's no. It, it's it's not the same because I mean, Iraq was being destabilized by a terrorist group, Al Qaeda, basically. Right. You know, and um, here well, you I, have it, a movement. It also was.